Okay, you've had all weekend to sit with the new Beyonce album, and now it is time to dive in deep. She really did it. Cowboy Carter, Beyonce's sort of country turn, is a triumph to me. Today on the podcast, what happens when Beyonce goes to the rodeo? The group dad is here. Let's get into it. I'm Alameen Abdul Mahmoud. This is Commotion. Okay, we're not going to waste any time here. You know why you're here. I know why you're here. Let's do this. I'm not going to lie to you. I've been playing this album and this song on repeat. That song is called Ya yeah, Ya. Yeah. That is off Beyonce's Cowboy Carter album. That album dropped on Friday. It is the second act in Beyonce's trilogy. This trilogy started with Renaissance in 2022. Look, it's doing some of the same work that Act One is doing. Beyonce is out here reclaiming some of the genres that black musicians founded in America. Country is one of those genres, and she's trying to have that conversation. Sort of. We're going to get into it right now. Andrea Williams is here. Ashley Ray's here. David Dennis Jr. is here. They've got a lot to say. Andrea, Ashley, David, welcome to the show. How's it going, everybody? Hey. Hello. Hey, hey, happy Beyonce hey, day. Good, yeah. Happy Beyonce day to you. Uh, this is, I'm really excited because I have so much to say that I'm vibrating. But let me start with all of you. Maybe I'll start with Andre here. You've had a few days to sit with this Beyonce record. How are you feeling about it so far? I, I feel like it's a Beyonce record, right? And so that <laughs> yes. means all of the Beyonce things. It means that she is incredibly talented and she brought in some incredible collaborators. And then there's all this other behind the scenes stuff that we have to deal with, the political of it and yeah. the intention of it. Um, and so that's from my vantage, I'll probably say 10 times today, I'm not a critic. So I'm not going <laughs> to speak on the music, right? I don't want anybody speaking on my art. Um, but on the political side of it in this space that she, is she is she trying to reclaim it? What is she doing here? Um, that's where I want to focus my energy. So on that, um, I don't honestly know what to think, right? Yeah, I, I, I'm talking to people on the ground yeah. here, and um, there there are some differing thoughts and opinions and feelings. Emotions are high in yeah. Nashville. So, so yeah. you, you're distinguishing between two things, which is like, one, there is the work, there's like the text of the album, and then there's two, there's a political work, the environment in which the album lands in that it's trying to have a conversation with, and whether it's effective at having that conversation. Because right. you're like, you're like I right. can speak to that, but I'm, I'm, I'm not going to speak yeah. on this on this album. We're going to come yeah. back to that in just a moment, but I'm going to get hey. sort of reactions around the table. <laughs> uh, Ashley, Yaya was your pick. You picked that song that started this record. That's one of your favorite cuts. What do you, what do you love about that song? What do you love? What 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 are you loving about this record so far? I I think it's the song that really captures what Beyonce is trying to do with this album. That it is a country album, but it's also about that bridge from country blues to rock. Which mm -hmm. I think Act Three we're going to see more rock. Which in this song you hear that it sounds like Tina Turner was in the booth with her, like mm. she got the spirit in her. It's it's amazing, and at the same time, it does pay homage to those earlier country tracks and I think it just does a beautiful job of simplifying her vision for this album it isn't just a country album it is Beyonce's take on country mm -hmm. uh, and I, I love it the the idea David Dennis Jr. of Beyonce trying to make a country album sort of struck people as like a bit on the nose initially the idea that she's just going to come out and make some <laughs> songs that are here are some country songs as made by Beyonce this is not what she's done. She's not made a mm. country album. She's, you know, made a Beyonce album for sure. She's also made a deeply Southern album. This album right. owes so much of its sound and its philosophy and its ideas um, to the South. What's your favorite cut? How is this album sitting with you right now? Okay, so for me, uh, my favorite cut, I, I, what I chose was the first favorite song I had, right, which was Protector. <laughs> so, like, so I, I chose Protector because obviously as a parent, it's just like hits you close to home. It it, it is this like this this vulnerable Beyonce sort of moment takes me back to the uh the Renaissance movie. Mm -hmm. But also it was the the song that like so I woke up first thing in the morning, wiping the crust out of my eyes, I would listen to this Beyonce, see what's going on, get my day started. And Protector yeah. was the first song where I was like, ooh. Like mm -hmm. what? Like, like I need to I need to like sit with this and like and like really it woke it woke me up sort of yeah. in the same way that Church Girls did 
when I was first listening to Renaissance, it sort of like gave me this, okay, we got something special here. And yeah. so that's what protected it to me. It was this vulnerability in a different way. And also the vocal range that she was doing to let us know what kind of vocal album that she was going to be putting together. Oh my God, I'm so glad you picked Protector. Let's hear a bit of Protector right now. And there I was, tangled up in Marigold. We were listening to the Reverend Children singing. Humming low as the garden river flows While the August light becomes a golden evening This is Protector off yeah. Beyonce's new Cowboy Carter album. Uh, I'm not gonna lie to you, the first, song, the first time that I put on the song, uh, in the car, my wife uh, sitting next to my daughter, I cried a little bit. It was it was like this yeah. sort of, you know, this like really like heavy emotional moment. Um, and I looked in the rear view mirror and I saw that my wife sitting next to my daughter was also crying. That's that's what Beyonce will do to you sometimes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, uh, Andrea, so let's get into it. Let's get into maybe like the country shades of this album. You know, the influences from countries past and present that you're hearing on this Beyonce album. How has she marshaled the forces of country, you think, to create this record? I think that she, I mean, obviously she's got some of those like super on the nose references. Like, I mean, if you cover Jolene and you bring in Dolly, like you yeah. are definitely making it clear that you're, that you're playing with country music, that you're yeah. going to come over, mess with it a little bit, stick a toe, maybe a whole foot in. Um, I think also one of the things that I will say that I appreciate, I have a lot of conversations about what country is and who gets to decide mm -hmm. what it is. Um, and I am never, ever going to be the one who starts kind of drawing the fences around it because I mean, Chris Stapleton started as Americana, right? We're starting to see this conversation about, is this an Americana record? Chris Stapleton started as Americana and really hasn't changed that sound, his sound that much and gets to be country now. So if Beyonce says this is country, and to be clear, she does, right? There's a little bit of like smoke and mirrors happening here where it's not a country album, but iTunes says it is, all the other DSPs say it is. Yeah. Um, so... I, I think I think that's critical, but I I do also think that she is taking her own mm -hmm. way, doing her doing it her own way, which I super appreciate. Even vocally, what we're talking about, I mean, her vocals are masterful because yes. she's Beyonce, um, and I think she alludes to the fact that country isn't always that right. Yeah. When you draw these tight ba uh, bounds around the genre and who can participate. You kind of get this one thing because you're saying that people who might bring all this innovation and creativity can't participate. Mm -hmm. So she's definitely doing that for sure. The the thing that really compelled me over this album is that Beyonce appears to be she, she's almost got like a historian hat on David Dennis Jr. Like there's something mm -hmm. about this record that is like unearthing of a lot of different ideas in American history, you know, American history mm -hmm. of music. And I just want to play a bit off the kicking off song of this record. This is from American Requiem, which starts this album. Can you hear me? Or do you feel me? So David Dennis, that's like clearly to me reminiscent of, you know, for what it's worth, um, Buffalo Springfield, that there's something mm -hmm. happening here. You know, like it's, it has a sort of, it's rooted in like protest music. It's rooted in sort of making the argument, right, that like there is something about the origins of American music that is black, that is, and there's a debt to be paid or repaid um, in terms mm -hmm. of where these I musical ideas come from. Um, when she says this ain't a country album, this is a Beyonce album, does that feel like semantics to you? This idea of she's pulling in all this history. It's not a country album on the nose, but it's a country album in the sense of it's a country album that pays tribute to the traditions that formed American music. So at the beginning of this, when, when she said that, I felt like it was like some a bit of semantics, a bit of nervousness, a bit of like, I yeah. don't know if this is how this is going to come out as a country album. But I, I, what I think we're getting here from Beyonce is an understanding that a lot of these different genres and compartmentalization of how we talk about genre is actually based in racism. Like it's race based, like we, things that are pop versus things that are R and B are based on race. Right. And so the idea of what we call country music now in the last few decades has been associated with white folks music and Beyonce, this album comes is birthed out of this moment. Yeah. And when she was not allowed into a, an, an air arena that was originally explicitly black, right? And so I think what yes. Beyonce is doing is trying to defy genre in a way that says, this is an album of a singular, great, 
black woman artist who is making this and genre does not matter here. Hmm. I'm going to pull from these things from my family history, which is a black history, which does not care what the CMAs or CMT or all these people think country should sound like. This is what my family's music sound like. This Mm -hmm. is the music that has defined America. So it feels more intentional than I'd originally thought when I thought she was just like kind of nervous about what this album would, would be, how it would be received. Yeah. Ashley, Ashley, how do you read that? How do you read her saying this is not a country album, it's a Beyonce album in the sense of trying to play with all these traditions? Yeah, I, I think she's also saying this because to say, you know, this is a country album, I think would give the feeling of isolating this album from the rest of her work when mm. in reality it is just as tied into Renaissance, Lemonade, as any of her other stuff, you hear the similar stories being told. You see how it's all connected. You see how she's, you know, referencing herself. And I think in that way, that's why this is Beyonce's approach to country, because mm-hmm. uh, it isn't just a pure country album. It is her speaking from the point of view in history that, you know, she cares about, like you said, David. Uh, and I, I think there are a few songs that really prove that. And I think they're the ones getting people the most angry, like Jolene. Mm-hmm. Uh, but at, like Bodyguard to me has like a beautiful Laurel Canyon Americana country sound. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, this is going to dominate. Like this is a, a new classic. Mm-hmm. And you can understand why like all these old white guys who, you know, just started letting black people into the rock and roll history museum are like, wait a second. Mm-hmm. You know, we're the ones who get to define the hits and she just made one. <laughs> well, so the, this is what's compelling to me about this record is that uh, Beyonce doesn't tend to do the let the lyrics do the talking. She lets the music do the talking and we project a lot onto the music. She's not an artist who fills in the blanks on our behalf. She's at least in the last sort of four records of her career, Andrea. Um, she's been someone who's like, I will let the music do the talking. She's been largely a conceptual artist um, for those records. We're talking about the self-titled, 2013, uh, Lemonade, certainly with, Remin- with Renaissance um, and, and with this record as well. Uh, the fact that she doesn't speak much, you know, she stopped doing media interviews a while ago, Andrea, means that she has to let the work do the talking, but also has to let the choices do the talking. When you see these choices, for example, example, the second song on the album is her covering Black, Blackbird by the Beatles, um, but she brings in a new generation of young uh, women, young black women um, in country music right now, and she lets them sort of carry the rest of the tune. Um, what do you make of those choices? What do you make of the choices of her bringing those women? Or, or there's some question as to when she made those choices in terms of actually bringing in those women. Do you want to talk a little bit about those choices? Yeah, I think that's the difficulty when we can't have the conversation with her, whether that's because she's really going deep and explaining her choices. Um, But there's there's a ton of projection. Right. And I feel like what we lose in the midst of all that. Right. Is the fact that we didn't get to these folks earlier, right? Hmm. People talking about the vinyl that is missing certain tracks. Like, I don't think it's coincidence that the Linda, Mar track, Linda Martell tracks are missing. Um, there's two, I but I should great. give the reference that there's two tracks that feature Linda Martell, who's the first Black woman to play the Spaghetti, Grand Ole Opry. Spaghetti That's and right. the Linda Martell show, correct, yeah. Yeah. Are, are what people are generally saying. And this is like Nashville conversations, but also like on the internet, that sure. these are not there. These there are later late editions. Yeah. Yeah. And I think some of that may have come from this projection, right? Talking about Beyonce's later work, it has been capital B Black. So if she wanted to come into this space or come adjacent to this space, it's not a country record. It's a Beyonce record that's also coded again in the metadata as country, perhaps so that as we saw with Daddy Lessons, it was this R&B thing that she wanted to push into country. Now she's going to say we're starting here. Some of this you might pull away, but some of it you can't. Right. Mm-hmm. Trying to work in the opposite direction perhaps for awards consideration, right? Perhaps to, again, get that outside validation that like I'm Beyonce and I can do whatever the heck I want to do. But a lot of the choices, if it is this full reclamation project, we can't say that it is. Well, then I'm really going to start to question, right? Because- I don't know that we need another Jolene cover. I'm going to be honest with you. Like, <laughs> I just, like, I think Dolly got enough checks, A, and there are other <laughs> ways to go about it, right? Like, let's cover Fairy Tale. Let's cover the Pointer Sisters country song yeah. that won a Grammy that was written by the Pointer Sisters, that was written by Black women. As far as the writing and production credit, people that are in this space, they don't, Black people don't have any credits on this mm-hmm. um you know there are of course your job but you mean the Sanix, samples and I, i'm saying in terms of who got to participate in the creation of this if we're fully reclaiming the space i see what you mean You 
you know what? I I regret to inform you. You just mentioned Jolene. We're gonna play it because when, when <laughs> no, because, I'm not because I'm when not Beyonce saying, when Beyonce I'm not comes, a critic. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's worth playing because I think it's worth talking about. Let's hear Beyonce's yeah, yeah, yeah. take on Jolene. Jolene, 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 Jolene. I'm warning you. Don't come for my man. So that is Beyonce covering Dolly Parton's classic Jolene. She obviously has an entirely different take to it. We are unpacking this new uh, Cowboy Carter album. Ashley Ray's here. Andre Williams is here. David Dennis Jr. is here. Look, I this song doesn't do a lot for me. It's actually kind of like the weird aberration on this record. I have skipped it several times as I've been playing it because I listen to this and go like, I don't know if I needed Beyonce to say, don't come for my man, then why are you saying her name so much if you're not feeling so threatened by her? It sort of takes away like the sting and the power of Jolene in many ways. But I don't, you know, many people feel differently. Ashley, are you on board with the, with the Beyonce Jolene take? I, I'm shocked by how it seems like people are misunderstanding this song so much. Okay, go It feels off. like everyone seems to believe she's talking about herself and her life and blah, blah, blah. When we know, she she said she was inspired by so many movies, so many old stories. Mm. And I'm sorry, but one of the oldest Black Southern stories is the scorned Black wife who shoots her husband's lover or husband. Mm. I mean, my own great aunt like shot her husband <laughs> when he cheated on her. She mm. brought him in the, in her and his mistress over, yeah. offered them lemonade came back with a gun, shot him. He didn't die. It was fine. But, you know, I, I think that is a realistic response within, like, the Black female community. And this is a version of Jolene that comes from that perspective and honors sort of those older stories. And I don't hmm. think is just Beyonce wanting a man, but is about this sort of older tradition of how Black womanhood was seen. Uh, so, so I think it's different and she changes the lyrics to make it more interesting in that way, which I find interesting. Yeah. Um, but, but yeah, it's, it's odd to me that people really want to take this as biographical when I think, you know, Dolly Parton was begging Beyonce to cover Jolene for years. And I think Beyonce (laughs) just went fine. I'm going to do it my way, but I can't sit here and say some white girl with red hair is prettier than me. It's just not realistic. <laughs> so I, she, you know, she was like, what do you mean? Like, I can't, I don't under, she, I don't think Beyonce could relate to the original lyrics of Jolene. I, I, I will say, uh, well, listen, David Dennis Jr., get in here first and then I'll, I'll tell you what I think afterwards, but go ahead. What, what's your take on Jolene? Yeah, it was fine. You know what I'm saying? Like this is this is the thing that like <laughs> okay, when right. when the when the album comes out sure. and she announces it, everybody says, Oh, she's gotta do a Jolene cover. This is like a fan service thing. And and mm. I agree, you know, what Ashley's saying here, like this is why Beyonce don't talk to us, right? Because she puts out Jolene and everybody's like, oh, she's still singing about Jay-Z. She's doing stuff. No, yeah. she's not. Like, it's not only, sure. it's Beyonce. It's it's all the history that was laid out just now, but also the fact, the history of country music. People always tell these stories. They tell these mm. fictional stories. Like nobody, no, you know, these, you know, people didn't actually go back and like have a, a, a shootout and a gun range for people. Like, this is what you do in storytelling and country music. And Beyonce sure. is tapping into that. And people immediately start of saying oh jay-z must cheat again or she's still upset about jay-z this is why she keeps it private because people because people are misreading all that the song itself i yes i could do without it's not really for me not my like not really keeping the momentum of the album but i understand why it's there okay my problem with I, i love everything that you guys just said but my problem with it is that the next song after the jolene cover on this record is the most compelling version of that which is daughter and i want i want to play i want to just play a little moment of daughter right now In case you were like, am I listening to some Italian? The answer is yes. Uh, Daughter is a straight up murder ballad. Like Beyonce Mm -hmm. goes Jolene and I'm going to threaten you. Please don't come for my man. But the very next song 
is a murder ballad, and a murder ballad is one of the great Southern traditions, Southern musical traditions, and she weaves into it an, a, like an opera. That's Beyonce to me. That's ambition, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. that's sort of like a larger conceptual take, whereas the, the cover of Jolene is the, let's say, palatable, let's say, you know, mm-hmm. country radio friendly version of the same idea, and I don't know if country radio is going to play that record or not, um, but certainly they have something to play with there should they choose to investigate it. Uh, I guess this is the part where we got to talk about, you know, Beyonce is the first black singer to top Billboard's hot country charts. That's a big deal. It's going to be an interesting year for Beyonce in terms of awards, to say the least. But David, you know, we know that there are black country artists struggling as we speak just to be seen and heard in the genre, you know, that black musicians help create. Um, is it naive to say that the moment that Beyonce is creating here with her country album, this album, whatever the stake is, will have a positive impact on the larger black country music community? Is that naive to say, do you think? I wouldn't say it's naive. It's hopeful. <laughs> you know, it, it's very hopeful. I'm, I'm generally a hopeful person. I'd like yeah. to not call myself naive. So, but, you okay, know, sometimes I am. But, like, so, yeah. uh, but, you know, I think that, like, uh, in the short term, it's going to help a lot. The streaming numbers, a lot of these artists who are featured are, have have shot through the roof. Yeah. The problem is um, that the the you say a rising tide lifts off ships, but Beyonce is more than a tide. Beyonce is the entire like hurricane, right? And so you have to think about what is that going to do for these artists in the long term because they are still stuck in this infrastructure of country music that mm. is not for them. That once Beyonce leaves and collects all of her awards and leaves what is left for these artists, especially within this genre, like the folks who are making these decisions, who decided to oust the biggest artist in the world, sure. you know, a few years ago are not going to suddenly say, well, this album was good. Maybe they know good black art exists within mm. the country music space. It is purely white supremacy and racism that excludes these folks. And that's not going to go away because Beyonce creates an album. What may actually happen is there's maybe even more sort of a desire to, to, um, ex- exclude these people from this genre because they're upset of what Beyonce does. So my hope sure. is that there is something left in the wake of this incredible positivity that upholds these black folks, that uplifts them, that creates some sort of different infrastructure so they can feel safe in this space. Because Beyonce is going to come and she's going to leave and go do her next thing. And so there has to be something left that sustains these artists so they're not just stuck dealing with the backlash. This is part of the show where I hand the microphone over to Andrea Williams and just walk away. <laughs> Andrea, this is this is what you do. This is a, this is yeah. the world that you live in. What What do you make of this moment? Yeah, no. I mean, everything David said is real and we've seen it before. Right. So this doesn't take conjecture like, you know, Chapel Heart goes on America's Got Talent, kills the game, gets the little golden ticket, like can't get any support for Music Row, like marching up and down the street like 10 times. And it's it's yeah. it's real there. There is a very intentional to again, to David's point, effort to keep the bounds around this contained. Yeah. Which, again, I think speaks to why. If Beyonce is doing what we think she's doing, we don't really know um, <laughs> why she why she is messing with it in the way she is, because we can't do that. But also the other side of it, and we keep talking about artists, artists don't make an industry in and of itself. In no other space do we only talk about artists, hmm. black songwriters, black musicians, black producers in Nashville. The movement hasn't started. It might as well be 2019 for these folks. And so to my Ooh. point about Who's getting credits? Who's involved in doing this? Yeah, let's slide the girls in on Blackbird. Let's slide Willie Jones in for about 15 seconds on Just for Fun. (laughs) Um, You know what I'm saying? Black songwriters, producers, musicians, we're not invited to the party yet. Um, Mm. We haven't seen the full musician credit listing, but Rihanna and Robert Randall, I was excited, right? I wrote a piece about Black collaborators, Black creatives being involved in this and what Beyonce's efforts could mean for them. That's where it's got to start. I don't know that we get there from this project. I absolutely have to leave it there. But thank you so much for your time, for your energy, for your Beyonce insights. Andre Williams writes for Vulture and The Tennessean in Nashville. David Dennis Jr. is a veteran music journalist and culture critic based in Atlanta, Georgia. And Ashley Ray is a comedian, actor, and host of the podcast TV essay. She's in Los Angeles. That Beyonce album, Cowboy Carter, is out right now. That is it for the show. I want to hear from you about what you think about this Beyonce record. So if you could just get on Instagram and tell me your favorite song from Cowboy Carter. I want to hear it because genuinely mine is daughter. I can't not stop listening to that song. But I want to know how this album is sitting with you. So get at me. I'm on Instagram at Elamine. That is it for the show. I'm going to be back tomorrow. I will see you then.